an ecumenical prayer to commemorate the Armenian Genocide was held at the Holy Sepulchre. A mission by the Italian Deputy Minister for International Cooperation has brought new medical aid for Gaza and the West Bank. During the month of April, the Holy Land welcomed a large number of pilgrims. For many of them, visiting the holy places is like a dream. On Saturday, April the 25th, a musical event was promoted at St. Joseph's School in Jerusalem and the title of the initiative was St. Joseph Sings. St. Gerasimus, located near the oasis of Deir Hajla in the Judean desert, is one of the most ancient monasteries in Palestine. The pain that the Armenians of Jerusalem feel is still alive. It has been 100 years since that tragic event on April the 24th, 1915, and it is still like an open wound. On Friday, April the 24th, at the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre, an ecumenical prayer was held with the participation of religious leaders from the local church and the diplomatic corps. The prayer was intended not only to commemorate what happened in the past, but also to bring awareness to the suffering of so many Christians today. During this time when Christianity is disappearing from this area, it is right for us to show a little solidarity with all of our Christian brothers, and Christian unity is a question of love. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I think this is the fundamental meaning of all of this. The communion between the churches is also a great gesture of solidarity with the Armenian people and with their sufferings, which are unfortunately being repeated today with many other Christian communities. Today we have done this ecumenical special service with the participation of the patriarchs and the custos of the Holy Land and with the heads of the churches and the diplomatic corps. The presence of the patriarchs and the heads of the church and the political diplomatic corps actually is a witness of their solidarity with our grief Within their own neighborhood in the old city of Jerusalem, the Armenian community has been present here since the first centuries. But as a result of the genocide, its population doubled. The Armenian Patriarchate continues to play an important role in preserving the centuries of culture of a community which is still in diaspora. That all the churches, all the patriarchs in Jerusalem, they are uh, attending a special prayer for the, for the sake of the Armenian, that my grandfather was one of them. Uh, this is a unique event in the history of Jerusalem and Holy Sepulchre, and uh, I feel it's mainly inspired by the ecumenic spirit of uh, His Holiness Francis, uh, and I think uh, this brings together the Christian family which is uh, not only reflecting on the historical fact of the Armenian genocide, but on the condition of Christians in the region. Uh, I think I'm first generation uh, uh, in the Armenian genocide. My grandfather was killed, also my uncle was killed. Uh, I think uh, 100 years is a short time and it's a long time. This is very painful, but we don't give up. A load of more than three tons of medicines will arrive in the Gaza Strip, 
with the help of Italian pharmaceutical companies that have intervened to support hospitals in the Gaza Strip. The humanitarian initiative was announced during the visit by the Honorable Lapo Pistelli, Italian Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, and the official aid delivery was received this week in Israel and Palestine by the local representative of the World Health Organization. The project is part of a broader emergency aid plan, which Italy signed on to during the Cairo conference last October. La cooperazione non è una spesa, è un investimento. È in zone di conflitto. Cooperation is not an expense, it is an investment. In areas of high intensity or low intensity conflict, like the one we face here, having means of cooperation that help to rebuild institutions and health services here and in the Gaza Strip is part of the contribution that politics can make to the material conditions of everyday life of people living here. In Gaza we face uh, chronic conditions that are mainly related to the closure of the Gaza Strip. Uh, it's related to importations of supplies, construction materials and of course also to the traffic of patients and health professionals. While there is some progress recently, there is also unfortunately a huge financial gap that still needs to be overcome to fully recover the Gaza Strip and, and the health facilities there. The Italians are definitely an important partner supporting our efforts. Durante la, il conflitto di Gaza sono stati, eh, During the last war in Gaza, 250,000 euros worth of drugs were paid for and delivered to the most important hospitals in Gaza. Currently, a 250,000 euro plan is helping to restore the European hospital in Gaza. Then, at the Shufa Hospital, there is a program of the NGO ASPO related to the work of some surgical teams. Program of the ONG ASPO for the work of some teams. New aid in the health sector is also coming for six hospitals in East Jerusalem in a larger plan that is funded by the European Union. Italian financing amounts to 1 million euros and the European Union has allocated 13 million and other European countries have provided additional contributions. If this European aid had not arrived, hospitals in Jerusalem would already have been closed for some time. This fund is very important for hospitals in Jerusalem because the six hospitals in Jerusalem suffer from a serious financial crisis. The cause of the crisis are the many cases of patients who are transferred to our hospitals from the West Bank and Gaza. The mission of Deputy Minister Pistelli, which included visits to several Italian cooperation projects and a meeting with the authorities on policies concerning Israeli-Palestinians, also had a clear political objective. Italy is a very strong partner for both Israel and the National Palestinian Authority, with whom we have a very old, strong relationship. There are negotiations in progress at this time, on the peace process, and there is a trend that was broken long ago. So we are all working, not by ourselves, to reconstruct the conditions under which the parties can talk to each other, either directly or indirectly. During the month of April, the Holy Land welcomed a large number of pilgrims. For the Jewish Passover and the Christian Easter, thousands of pilgrims from around the world visited Jerusalem and now with the arrival of spring, groups keep coming. We have received many groups and thank God during the month of April the numbers have sharply increased. I think this week the number of groups has gone up by 100%. Pilgrimage is part of the life of faith, the experience of faith of all Christians. The Holy Land is the most important and coveted place for Christians in all the world. For many pilgrims, this is the trip of their dreams. It's an opportunity to touch the holy sites, to read the Bible in a different way. Coming here means experiencing the land where Jesus was born, raised and suffered all of his passion, and where in the end he was raised from the dead. It is true that visiting the Holy Land is a dream, but it is also a challenge. In addition to the financial aspect, there is also the fear that many people feel due to the news coverage of the Middle East. 
muito tranquilo toda vez que a gente Thank God everything is very peaceful. Whenever we decide to organize a group visit to the Holy Land, it fills up immediately. Everyone dreams of visiting the Holy Land. Ficam, vive aquele sonho de visitar a Terra Santa. Sim, sem dúvida que estamos nessa expectativa para que cada vez mais os grupos possam... We expect many groups in the Holy Land, because what happens in other countries in the Middle East does not affect the safety of the places you can visit. We have no security problems. Groups can come here without fear. Então não tem nenhum problema em relação à segurança. Os grupos podem vir com a maior tranquilidade. De emoção de estar aqui na Terra Santa... It's a thrill to be here in the Holy Land. I bring pilgrims here twice a year. It's not possible to imagine what this visit is like, to walk in these places where our Lord walked. And also there are some excellent hotels here, and this is a safe, quiet place. Visiting the Holy Land is possible. It is truly worth it. It's a safe, quiet place. You can visit the Holy Land. Visit the Holy Land! St. Joseph Sings is the title of a day entirely dedicated to music, promoted by St. Joseph's Girl School in the Old City of Jerusalem. It was held on Saturday, April the 25th. Boys and girls of all grades took part in the various programs to improve their knowledge of Eastern rhythms and instruments and learn how to play them at their best. There were performances with the kanun, with the tabla, the oud and the lute. Oggi è per la prima volta abbiamo fatto a scuola una esperienza di musica. Today for the first time at the school we had a musical experience. We had a teacher specialized in Eastern music. She wanted the girls to discover the art of this Eastern music as well as all of the typical instruments and how to use them. Music is an art because it expresses a person's feelings. If the person is happy, music can express their joy. If someone is a little sad, music can contain different melodies. Espressione e anche il sentimento della persona si in gioia può esprimere la gioia, si è un po' trista anche la musica ci ci sono delle melodie diverse. I work at the school and I think that music should have an important place. In the Arab context, its role is still weak, although in Jerusalem there are various extracurricular activities available, so little by little we have made this idea a reality. Earlier this year, we organized a choir and we promoted activities for both the end of the school year and for Mother's Day. Today we worked so hard with the choir and during music hour we prepared images of various artists. All of the students participated in decorating the school and students from Music Academy in Jerusalem also helped by accompanying us with their music. We have so many beautiful undiscovered voices. Thus far, many girls are shy and are hesitant to sing, but these girls have so many beautiful voices and so much positive energy, both in the choir and in the other arts. They have a nice character and with them I feel like time goes by quickly. It is a real joy. Music is beautiful and useful. I am learning how to imitate the sounds with my mouth so I can sing Eastern music. The day dedicated to music was also important for the St. Joseph's School Choir. With workshops helping them express themselves through traditional Eastern songs, the girls' ability and the sweetness of their voices really came through. Two kilometers from the Jordan River, in the Deir Hajla Desert, we find the monastery of St. Gerasimus, named after the man who, in the 4th century AD, built what is now one of the oldest monasteries in Palestine. The commemoration of the saint takes place every year on March the 4th. According to ecclesiastical sources, St. Gerasimus died here in the year 479. This is one of the many monasteries in the Judean desert. Monastic life in the desert began in the 3rd century AD, 
and it spread up to Sinai, meaning to the desert, because so many people wanted to worship the Lord, leave the material life and devote themselves to the spiritual life. This is one of the cells or cloisters that was built during the time so that the monks could meet for prayer or for meals. The importance of the place lies in the fact that the head of this monastery was Saint Gerasimus. Within the monastery there is a small chapel built at the time of the Apostles in a grotto that is believed to have housed the Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph and the baby Jesus during their journey from Palestine to Egypt when they were escaping Herod. The chapel is now located under the main church of the monastery. It consists of three naves and it was built to commemorate the saints who lived as hermits in the desert around the Dead Sea. The first monk who lived here and founded the hermitage was called Malawun, one of the followers of Saint Kiraton in the 2nd century. Then came Saint Gerasimus. Saint Malawun believed that he had to build his hermitage here in honor of Saint Joseph, the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus. Deir Hajla is important for the Christian religion because the Virgin Mary visited this place with Jesus. This is one reason why it is called Deir Hajla. It is said that the name comes from the Arabic verb Hajla, which in Arabic means walking on one leg. The Virgin Mary carrying Jesus walked on one foot while she was fleeing from the Romans. This is one reason that this place was a Byzantine monastery is proved by the existence of Byzantine mosaics on the church floor. Currently, they are building a staircase in the monastery with a background of mosaics representing Palestine at the time of Alexander the Great. The monastery has a bookstore and a souvenir shop, in addition to a garden to accommodate tourists and a mosaic workshop. To the north, we find the spring of Hajla, which gives life to a little oasis in the desert with flourishing vegetation. to tell you about the Holy Land. To raise awareness and visibility of the Mother Church of Jerusalem, local Christians and holy places. We are here to tell so many forgotten stories of daily efforts, courage and faith. We are here to promote hope in the land of God. Support those who give a voice to custody of the Holy Land's work.